Jade and today I want to talk to you about how to keep going when you feel like giving up. Something that happened to me loads during my recovery period, which was, I would say, when I really went for it, about two years. I felt like giving up multiple times and it was only through grit, motivation, determination and a belief in the process I was going through. So I suffered with OCD for 17 years, really severe OCD, and today it plays an extremely minimal role in my life. It doesn't really affect me and it comes up every now and then. And my brain is pretty well equipped to dismantle it, even without me doing anything. And so there's different stages to the times when I wanted to give up. The first part of the journey, I suppose, is when you're just in the absolute hopeless phase where for me, that was not even knowing I had OCD, not knowing that I had even a mental illness, just thinking there was something completely wrong with me and just not even having a clue where to start, having no one to talk to about it. Um, and that can be the most lonely time you can ever experience. Now there's no situation in life where I think it could be worse than what that felt like. And so it's kind of good to know that I've pretty much already faced what I imagine to be the worst feelings and emotions I could possibly ever imagine like I don't know maybe there's more to come that's different in life but I don't think people realize just the gravity of OCD suffering especially when you're alone and you don't know what it is so that was the first area where I felt like giving up whatever giving up means you know just not even trying anymore you know for me that was just like staying in bed not even trying and it really hit me at age 25, so 10 years ago, when I had a bit of a breakdown. I couldn't avoid anymore. I'd boxed my world in so small that there was nowhere to even hide anymore. It was like I'd avoided so much. Like it used to be that I'd avoid a trigger at a particular event. And then it was like I avoided a trigger, an image of a trigger. And then it was like nothing I could watch on TV, everything was censored, and then even colors. And just the more I avoided, the worse it got to the point where, and I'm serious here, like if I even saw an image of a trigger, I'd be throwing up and being sick in bed for a few days. That was how bad my OCD was before I knew I had it. And so I felt like giving up, to be honest, like on life, I just felt like, what's the point of even living? It was just like, I felt like if a bus hit me now, if I stood out into the road and the bus hit me, that would be a positive thing. That's how I felt about it, about life. Um, and then when I finally learned about OCD four years after that, so there was a long road ahead, I felt like a 60% lift. I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm unwell. There's something wrong here. There's an explanation for this. And I felt like amazing. I was like, we're doing this. It's all going to go now. And if anyone's ever watched Pure on Channel 4, um, the series about OCD it was like she had the same thing. It was like, oh, I know what it is now. And so I'm going to be better. Sadly not. So I think a few months into having CBT therapy for OCD, I was getting so much better. You know, all this stuff worked so well. I was doing exposures. I was doing um, living with uncertainty. Sorry, it's really windy outside. And my we've got like a parasol umbrella that's going a bit crazy hopefully it hangs on. Um, and yeah, we were doing all these different things and I got about 60% better. And if anyone can relate to this, it's like I did everything you're supposed to do to get better from OCD. And there was just something still niggling away. And I think that people with extreme severe OCD can relate to this. And this is where the idea of like, you can manage symptoms, but you can't ever get better. That's where that comes in. I felt like I was at the end of the road after I'd done all that. Like I was genuinely living so much better I was functioning. I wasn't having multiple panic attacks. It had done wonders. And I, I'm never going to take away from the incredible journey I went through with all of the things I did that led to today. So all of the CBT, everything that's gold standard in OCD absolutely works. Like it's, there's a reason I'm not contradicting that. There's a reason that it's globally recognized as the way to treat OCD. I just worry about the volume of us who after doing everything right, after following the programs, are still not 100% sure that we've gone as far as we could have. And so that's where my second like 
felt like giving up came in. It was like, this is as good as it's going to get. I'm feeling fine, but I'm always going to have this like in the back of my mind fear. I'm never going to be better. I'm always going to have to remind myself that it's OCD. And so it was just this constant background. So I felt like giving up because it was almost like, what's the point of even carrying on with any form of treatment? Because I'm never going to get better than just living with it and anxiety attacks going. So I felt like giving up then. When I ramped up my exposures, because it was kind of like, look, another reason you're not doing 100% great is that you're not doing enough exposures. Doing exposures was like, for me, just utterly terrifying. And when you don't really have a belief that you're going to get better anyway, it's just like so demoralizing to constantly put yourself in front of your fears and feel like, well, this isn't going to do anything anyway. There's no point. That was the most downhearted I felt. I remember at that point in recovery, the first one was just feeling really angry. Why me? Why did I have to have this illness? You know, why am I so unfortunate to be living this way? Why can't my brain be normal? Why can't I do things like everyone else and not be panicking and worrying? And then the second one, so it's anger. And then the second one was just sadness. I remember just crying so much. I was almost like, because I'd had children at that point, I had a daughter. I was almost like mourning what we would lose. I was crying about all of the holidays that I wasn't going to enjoy with her and all of the missed opportunities to bond because of my fears and worrying about all the potential fears I would pass down to her because of my OCD. And from there, some kind of spark came up, like some kind of like invisible motivation that I'd never felt before. It was almost like I had this person in my life who was this measure of time. It's like, wow, she's a year old now. Wow, she's two years old now. And like, I had this feeling of, I want her childhood to be filled with this fun mum. Like, not a fun mum, just who I am. Like, I don't know if you can relate to this, but I feel like OCD takes away who we are. Like, my husband used to say it. He'd be like, oh, Jade's back. If I'd gotten out of a nasty spiral and I'd be back and I was me again. And he'd be like, you're back. This is so fun. You know, like... I'm not saying I'm fun, but just, it just, when you get triggered, it robs you of that look in your eyes of you, I think, which I'm currently feeling anyway, because I'm so tired from being up with a sick baby for two days. It's like, I don't feel like me right now anyway. But that was the, yeah, that was it. It was a sadness. It was like, my life is improved beyond measure. I'm no longer scared to just do basic things, but I am missing out. I'm missing life. And I don't want to get to like being a grandparent and thinking, I just miss my kid's childhood. And I'm not saying that you're missing your kid's childhood. If you're suffering with OCD right now and you're struggling and they're grown ups, like, honestly, there's some elements of me in, in my OCD suffering years that were better as a mother. So like now that I'm not suffering as much, I'm a bit better at just switching off from them a minute and just sorting myself out with what I need to get done. Whereas before when I was suffering with OCD, I was just cradling them in and there was a lot of cuddles and like nurturing them and like getting out with them for walks so don't beat yourself up if I'm like talking about the situation that you're in and still in like it's not me saying oh you're missing everything and you're ruining your kid's child because I'm not I'm not saying that at all but it was just that I just needed that I needed those down days those terrible I'm gonna give up I can't do this anymore days and I need them to be like one after the other, one after the other, one after the other, it's for me to finally go, I'm just not living like this anymore. And I, I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I think that's the grit that we need. I talk about this a lot, but like, you're not weak. Being in life, in this life with a mental illness, with OCD is extremely hard. And now that I've tasted what life is like without that OCD suffering, it's unbelievable how easy the things that people moan about are because it used to be hard because of the fog of OCD. Oh, there's um, loads of bills that need sorting out and my head's going to blow off because I don't know what's going on or there's a situation at work that's really stressful. That felt really bad because of how OCD was and like it was an additional thing on top of OCD. Once you get that clarity of mind that's free from OCD suffering and 
you see the world for what it really is, which is brilliant and beautiful and great. And there's amazing things that are happening every day. And then something challenging comes along that everyone else freaks out about and is having a meltdown. It's literally like, this is going to be fine. You know, it's not ideal, but we'll work through it. And it just goes to show you just how hard living with OCD is. And I want you to use that to your strength, to recognize that maybe it appears to the outside that us being in bed for three days watching Netflix and crying is weak. But if someone was in your brain and could feel and hear and sense the things that you're going through, you know, they'd understand they'd be doing the same thing. So I'm not really getting to the point of like, oh, you need people to understand. It's just that I don't, I want to get a message out to people with OCD that they're the opposite of weak. They are, it's not like, oh, go you, you've got this, you're strong. Cause I hate that as well. It's just that you genuinely are like to have lived through what you've lived through is unbelievable. Even if you're in bed and I just keep going on about this, but I just think that the narrative around like us needing, yeah, I don't know. I can't explain what I'm saying, but you're strong <laughs> and that strength is what we need to push us through and get us to a place where we're like i'm just not doing this i'm not living like this yes today is a bad day and i feel like there's no point but i'm here to say that if i can do it you can do it it took a lot more grit and determination than i thought and i think that the reason why i wanted to give up on several occasions was because i fundamentally didn't really believe that it was going to work and that it was going to get to a place but when you start to feel it's like a video game you start to feel levels unlocking it's so hard to explain but it'll be like one day you'll wake up this will happen for me and the deep anxiety wasn't there when i woke up the day felt fresh I looked out the window i felt excited like i was five again because that's the only time i remember not having ocd is like being about five and it was like I can hear the birds, I could see the tree, like you can hear the trees rustling in the morning, I could see the blue sky. And I was excited to open the blinds and excited to get dressed and that was scary. And my door just closed itself. Um, and so it's like, if I can do that, if I can get to that place, you can as well. And there's these different levels where you'll end up where, and this happened to me, you're sitting in this scenario that used to be what you'd imagine to be the most triggering, triggering thing that you could possibly do. And you sat there and you're looking around and you're like, I'm enjoying this. This is nice. This is, this is fun. And I think the reason for that is because OCD, as everyone always says, OCD will latch to the things that you love and are important to you and takes them away from you. But once you can get better and then enjoy doing those things, how amazing, because you got back what you always loved. And so that's why I wanna give you hope that in a really, I feel like I'm just like stringing my words together in a sleep haze because I'm so unbelievably tired. Um, and I've lost my train of thought. No, it's like giving you that hope that as soon as you don't care or don't mind the idea of living the rest of your life, dealing with anxiety and you welcome it in and you let it be there it's not like the outcome is that you just get used to it it it's that it goes it's that it leaves you alone it's like if you decide to adopt the philosophy of life i'm living you anxiety you're welcome to join me i don't really give a crap if you're there or not i obviously would prefer if you were gone i don't particularly enjoy how much distress I've had from you over the years. But today I'm deciding that I'm carrying on with stuff and you're going to have to come with me. And I strongly recommend that you read, if you haven't already, Paul David's At Last A Life book, because he talks about this idea of moving in towards the anxiety, not running away from it. And that was game changing. And so that's the key message today is just when you feel like there's no hope, like, checking on this channel like and any other ocd support places that you go which are healthy support where you hear about people who are are get have gotten there are doing it and i think it's really important as a final note that you genuinely get the plan that you're on 
for me, I had a clear plan of action for my recovery. There is a video I did not so long ago called my OCD recovery plan, which could really help you with that. So that you need to create your own, whether it's with your therapist or the life coach you're working with or both in tandem. You need to create your own recovery plan that you really believe in. I did have a couple of years where I was working on my OCD and there were things that didn't line up. There were things like, but that doesn't make any sense. Why am I doing that? Why am I doing this? And the more I found specialists and the more I dealt with better therapists, better life coaches, it has to make sense to you. Now I'm not talking about the doubting disorder of like doubting everything, but fundamentally a plan has to make sense. Do you have to speak to someone who they get what you're going through? They've got a plan, they've done it before with others and they can prove that it works and you believe in it fundamentally. And then yes, you let the doubts come up as and when they will, as they will. But that's the key to getting through those, those hopeless days. As long as you know that you're on a path toward getting better, it doesn't matter if you've just had 20 down days in a row. It's still, today is the day that you can say, do you know what, forget about those 20 days. I'm rewriting down my recovery plan. I'm doing exposures first thing tomorrow or now. I'm going somewhere that scares me. I'm writing down my rational beliefs and disputing them. I'm making peace with worst case scenarios. I'm working on uncertainty. I'm leaving my thoughts alone. I'm not gonna do compulsions. Like just start again. There's no, there's no problem how long it takes. You know, I started again a few times and people wanna know how long it takes. It takes as long as it takes. That's definitely a song from a kid's show. It takes as long as it takes, you'll just have to wait. Um, and so you just have to recognize that it's okay to take breaks and breathers as long as you don't just sink into them for years. And it's okay that progress takes time and your down days, your days where you doubt it's ever gonna work, just don't matter. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other, even if you get three steps back. You've just got to keep going. And, you know, in my worst days during recovery, during my exposure programs, I would be huddled underneath my breakfast bar, like crying, saying to my husband, I physically can't do another day of this. And obviously I did, didn't I? That was a down day. The next day it might have lifted a bit. The next day it might have been a down day. And what happens is you just start to have fewer and fewer down days and more and more good days. And then it just slowly, start to trickle away but sadly this is really hard to get our heads around but unfortunately the more that we desperately want to get better the more that we want anxiety gone the more that we're doing things to get rid of anxiety the more it's going to be present and this is not me speaking this is just how anxiety works like you could read every book about anxiety well maybe not every book because a lot of them get it wrong but it's widely known that pushing OC pushing anxiety away often strengthens it, strengthens it. I can't even speak, I'm so tired. I think I need to go for a nap. If you have any questions for me, please comment below. Give me a like if you like this video and subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss any videos. And yeah, any questions you have, I'd be very happy to answer them. Thank you so much. And I hope that today can be a little bit better for you after watching this. Bye.